transferred to the new store on Harvard and I was a bartender. Um, uh, an incident happened to me with one of my co-workers, uh, Mark, who is a Caucasian. And um, what happened was Mark uh, accused me of stealing his tips. Uh, Mark called me black motherfuckers, uh, thieving bitch, and I better give him my tips. My name is Clarence Adams. My case is, well, I was talking to a young lady. When she walked by, I asked her how her day was and everything. She said it was fine. So I asked her again. She got kind of loud and started cussing me out and everything. So as I followed her to the back, um, we had a little disagreement. I asked her, don't talk to me like that. And I had a witness there at the time, too. So as the manager comes through the door, she gets to say how I touched her. And, phys and like, like physically touched her and felt her and everything, which I did not. I didn't say anything. I just left and went back to my station. So the manager comes out. He um, have her come in the office. And I remind you that we just had a little verbal altercation. When she comes out the office, it comes out to be a sexual harassment. I don't know how it came from being a sexual harassment just that fast. So pretty much. They fired you unjustly and fired you on the spot. On the spot, on the spot. And I asked him before I came in, man, am I going to work? Because I don't want to come up here for nothing. That man told me, yes, we're cool. When I got up here, he looked me dead in my face and told me, we know, your, your, I'm going to put in my own words, your help is no longer, we don't need you anymore, Mr. Adams. Let's go to Dorothea. Because it, it seems like um, 
with you having the the imprint of the grass. Let's find out. Tell us your story. What's On your July the first of two thousand ten, I called off. I tried to call off because I don't like to call off. And two of the girls, one by the name of Lauren and another one by the name of Shanti, they say, "Oh yeah, Mama, we'll take your shift. You always cover for us when you can." And so by that time, it was around 2 or 3 o'clock, Jonathan comes in. Jonathan Patterson. And he says, uh, so Ashanti tells him, well, we're going to work for Mama D. They all call me Mama. And we're going to work for Mama D. And um, he said, no, you can't. She needs to come in here. And it's not like I call off because I done got my cell phone bill paid for the next day. I have bills. You know, I have grandchildren, children that I'll send through school or whatever. And if I call off, I'm not, it's some personal or, you know, very emergency because I'm always <coughs> working. I'm always there. I open the store and I will close it. Mm -hmm. And I was told, uh, Ashanti tells, calls me back. She said, Mama, Jonathan's not letting us work for you. He said, you have to get in here or you'll be fired or rolled up. I'm like, are you serious? What have I done, Jonathan? I mean, if I tell you I'm not feeling good, I'm not feeling good. And he says, I have to get in there or I get rolled up or fired. And so I make it, I get up and get myself together and I'm praying, oh my God, I hope I make it through this evening because I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good at all. I, uh, I, make, I remember making it in the parking lot. And that's all I remember. I get out the car, and I t remember trying to make it toward, because when I got out the car, I felt very woozy. And when I tried to make it towards the door, I never made it. That's all I remember. And I woke up to someone pumping my, well, I was getting, uh, I guess, from what I hear, because I don't know, I was out of it, that uh, some guests found me laying there. I almost was ran over by a car. A gentleman came and was holding my hand. Uh, a lady, uh, some people saw me in uniform and they ran in. This is what I hear from the... Uh, the guest found you. Yeah, the guest found me. Okay. So, um, not once did Jonathan tell anyone to call 911 or did they go in the office because 911 wasn't never called from the Olive Garden. So, one of the guests said, are you serious? You know, what's going on with the managers? Can't nobody come out here and see in some of the uh, uh, hostesses that was up front. They say, Jonathan, the guests are very angry because won't nobody go out there. And one of the hosts tells me that, you know, and Jonathan said, well, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Shut the restaurant down because she's laid up out there? Jonathan, <laughs> is that how you feel? Is that how you feel? You're supposed to shut. No, we didn't ask you to shut the restaurant down because I was laid up out there. We didn't ask you to do that. That's all I asked was a little help. I come in there and I work all day. All day. I want to make sure everything is going right because guess what? I'm a stockholder. I'm not just knowing anyone that comes there. Uh, what's your name? I'm Mary. Are I'm you lost? Lost? I'm not lost. Okay, so you came with them. So how, what they do to you? I was terminated because a guest didn't see me at the table. Okay. Meaning what? Break that down because I'm a little confused. You, you, you were terminated because a guest didn't see you? At the table. At the table. Something like that 15 minutes. Okay, so... But you, it, that was a table of 18, right? Yes. And they didn't, but you had served the 18. We served it. We started the 12. Right. The 18 started coming in. Okay. And our other tables kept getting set. Okay. So with the 18, we actually needed other help from other servers okay. in the restaurant. And that's what we did to both of us, September 9th. 21 days after that, the senior vice president of the district called me and gave me my job back. That was October 5th. He told me to call the general manager who terminated me the first time to get on next week's schedule. And that was Thursday, 10-7. When I called him, he scheduled me lunch. I don't work lunch, I work dinner. Why? 
I just work dinner. That's your schedule. That's yes. what you came in on. Yes. That's what you was hired That's as a in my availability when we first when opened you, that new store, I you, scheduled myself only dinner because we were only allowed five shifts. Okay. So and you I don't work family. lunch, but you do dinner. Yeah. Okay. And I had a, I have a family to take care of. I can't rely on the lunch money and right. the dinner money. I do better. Okay. And I told the general manager that I watched my grandson. Okay. I'll call you back when you get the schedule right. He said, no, you're not going to win. Come in Tuesday, 10, 12 at 5 o'clock. And that's an unsuitable work offer because that's a job I'm not going to win on. He told me to come in. He told me you're not going to win. Come in. So I called Sam Piera, who gave me my job back. I told him the general manager started conflict right away. I only worked dinner. He scheduled me lunch. And uh, there was a threat, him telling me I'm not going to win. I don't feel safe about my job. And uh, he'll have Kelly Watson, the district manager, call me back after he finds out what the general manager meant when he told me I wasn't going to win. And the G uh, Kelly Watson told me that Larry Lindsay meant it was a no-win situation and a poor choice of words. To me, when I got on my job, I was going to see how I wasn't going to win, just like the rest of my co-workers here have told. You know, just listening to how these people are being oppressed, discriminated, you know, it just, my heart just goes out to them. Right. What's your name, young lady? Uh, my name is Chrislyn. Um, I worked at the Olive Garden for almost five years. I started there as a server in, I believe, 2006, at the beginning of 2006. Um, I had no problems with the company. I drank the Kool-Aid, swallowed it, I made sandwich out of it. I, I love that place. Like, I literally, I love my job. So, um, I became pregnant in March 2009. Uh, I informed the Olive Garden that I was pregnant. I watched how they treated the other uh, young ladies that were pregnant. Now, depending on who you were, like you heard in the other stories, there are certain things, certain criteria that you were okay, and there are certain criteria that they would pick on you or they didn't really appreciate your employment with them. So a manager named Heather came to me and she said, you know, you're pregnant, you know. Now she's pregnant too, by the way. Mm -hmm. She said, well, you're pregnant, you know, and I know how you feel because I'm pregnant too. And, you know, you don't want to go over there to that new store. You should just take this buyout. And I said, what buyout? She said, well, they'll give you $2,000 if you resign and not go over to the new store. And you'll be in good standing if you want to come back after you had a baby. So basically, have your baby come back. You know, take this money, have your baby come back, and, we'll, and everything will be fine. But now my accumulation of time would start all over again, which that's something I didn't want to do. You know, she was offering it to me like two, three times a week. Like she would just keep just hammering it in, you know, tell me how hard times are or whatever, like she's living my life. So eventually she got the message, no, I'm not going to accept the buyout. I am going over to the new restaurant. So I usually would work four or five days a week, you know, any, right in there. You know, we went over to the new restaurant. Now, all of a sudden, I have two days a week. Well, I'm watching these people that are getting hired, and they're coming in, and they got five days. I'm working. I'm fine. One day in November, I come in for my shift, and there's a bartender named Christine there. She says, what are you doing here? I said, I'm not here to eat. You know, I work here. I'm here to work. Oh, you're not on schedule anymore. Wait a minute. Am I not on the schedule for today? Or am I not on the schedule anymore? I'm not on the schedule anymore. My name is Keandra Steele, but I'm an owner on the Olive Garden. It's Key. I worked at the Olive Garden for about a year, almost two. But anybody can tell you in Olive Garden that I was one of the best bussers. Not only the best bussers, but I was the only female busser in the Olive Garden. It got so bad that they gave me one day, I didn't even have to call and ask my schedule. I'd just be like, what day? Is it Monday or su through Sunday? Which one is it? You didn't even have to tell me nothing else. So I talked to Chuck. He was like, well, as of right now, you're suspended. I'm like, what was you going to tell me? You knew I had to come in here at 8. Why didn't you call me and let me know that I was suspended for? What was you suspended for? You know what I'm saying? He still didn't tell me what I was suspended for. He didn't even tell me what I was fired for. 
I haven't signed anything to show that I was fired. Anything that said that I couldn't come back up there to eat because it's not in the handbook. I haven't signed anything. We haven't even talked about anything. Um, I come up there January 12th, 2010, which I regret this day till now. This is one of the worst days of my life. The person behind the bar was like, oh my God. So I'm like, what? It's like, the police is here. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you serious? So I turned around and you just believe the police is here. What police? Backford. We had a restaurant in Warrenville. So which police was supposed to be there? Backford? Oh, okay. So Backford was there. He, in a sense, he called in a personal favor or yeah. something. From his contacts and his phone. Well, yeah. his hey, y'all, this is Sister Brown, and it's time to go. And I know today's show was off the hook. Anytime it's an injustice and we put it out in the public, it's a justice. So check this out. I see y'all next week. This has been Nation Talk. And one thing you've got to remember I ain't drunk.